Welcome to Seller's Journey, the podcast where we speak to great sales reps and leaders and share their real stories from start to sales success. Hi, everyone. I'm Joseph Fung, and today I'm speaking with Ian Hansen. Ian leads partnership sales at Fritz Solar. Ian, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Joseph. Uh, I'm so excited about our conversation because not only are you a accomplished uh, sales rep and leader, but you're also uh, an alumnus of the Uvaro program. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how my time with you at Uvaro intersects with your overall journey. Uh, this will be a fun conversation. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I, I know we spend a lot of time on kind of webcams and videos, and uh, we're we're all working from home. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad that you're taking the time to join me. Uh, and I know that we have a lot of fun talking and hanging about in class. Uh, I don't want to confirm. Yes, I am here in the, in the studio. I've got my party pants on. Uh, I've got my full kind of work from home mullet going. Uh, yeah. Are you all set up? Yeah, no, I actually, um, I, I thought I was ready for a video. So like, I, I actually like got dressed. I'm wearing jeans for once, like for the first time <laughs> in about three, four days. It's good that we're uh, keeping, keeping it professional and, and on the up and up, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I know we've had a chance to chat and get to know each other over the, the last few months and weeks. And, uh, but let's start off for our audience. Uh, the basics. Where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? Yeah, so I um I spent pretty pretty well my whole like young life in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh so just yeah, went through like elementary school, high school in the same neighborhood that I that I grew up in since I was about 5 years old. Um after after high school, I pretty much as soon as I turned 18, as soon as I was done high school, I left um and went to a town of about 40 people in the Yukon. Uh, I was cooking cooking in hotels up there. Um Running away from all my problems, as people do. That's the only reason people go to the Yukon. Um, but yeah. It's that, true. I mean, part of my life journey, too. I mean, I took off and went to the Yukon and, and cooked as well, of course, like everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? That's 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 the thing to do. Um, so I spent uh, spent about three three summers up there coming back for the, obviously, the good part of Winnipeg, the winter. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then after that, I spent... Uh, um, kind of, I got into into sales for a while. My first sales job, I was actually I was over in Edmonton, Alberta, and I was doing door to door door to door sales for Direct Energy. So it's just like fixed price electricity, natural gas. Uh, from there, I went back to Winnipeg, um, and then I was at the University of Manitoba for psychology for a year. Um, that uh, I, I really enjoyed that, and I, I do want to go back to university at some point, but when it came time to think about going to university in terms of getting a career, um, for psychology specifically, and for a lot of degrees like that, I knew that I would have had to be in school for six, seven years, would have needed to get a master's degree at least. Mm. Um, and then that sort of brought me to starting my own, starting my own business. I tried to start a clothing business for jeans, and that... Uh, we had like a Kickstarter and like Instagram, all of that. The Kickstarter raised about ten thousand dollars. We needed fifteen for our first run of production. So that. So the jeans you're wearing today aren't from that company. No, no, I still have a pair somewhere, uh, <laughs> but they were all women's jeans, so I probably wouldn't be wearing them. Uh, yeah. So I, I need to ask because you, you skimmed through it really quickly. You were doing door-to-door uh, -door sales mm -hmm. in in Edmonton, right? Yeah. Now. You, you you took off, you're cooking at hotels in the Yukon. You've done door-to-door -door sales in Edmonton. How cold does it get in Edmonton in the winter? Um, I mean, after you've lived in Winnipeg, nothing really feels cold. It's like, but it's still prairie, so you still get minus 30 over there. Just not as much of it as here, and you don't get minus 50 like you do in Winnipeg. Yep. You're just confirming, that's Celsius, right? Yeah. But okay, that's not so minus wind chill. Of minus 20, minus 30 Fahrenheit plus wind chill. That's bringing it down to like minus 50 or so. So when I hear people complain about how tough sales is, I'm going to be sending people to this podcast because that's that's some tough stuff there. Yeah, well, people let you in the door. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to send them with the door open. <laughs> but but do, they, do they open it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they exactly. They see you okay. and they're just like, oh my God, come inside. I don't care why you're here, but like have a coffee <laughs> okay so you're you're doing door-to-door -door sales 
uh, you got that work at OmniShield. So your your journey into sales was through entrepreneurship, uh, and that's that's really cool. Uh, but something like that's a little bit different. Uh, you've also had the opportunity to kind of build on your experience and get yourself set up for more technology and remote sales. Uh, can you share a little bit about you know what that was like? I know you you found the Uvaro program, but you know how did you find that? How did you find the program and then get into it? Yeah, so. How I found it's kind of funny because I, I explicitly remember clicking on the ad at about 3 a.m. on Reddit, uh, which is, I think, the perfect place to be advertising. Because if you're looking, if you're on Reddit at 3 a.m., you probably need something. <laughs> you really need something to figure <laughs> out. Um, and yeah, so that was the, the program was amazing because it um, I was doing doing direct sales with OmniShield and I was managing them. And that was pretty much pin to pin uh, 12 hour days, like monday monday through saturday i had sundays off which are the worst days to have off because you can't do anything um and i wanted to get into something that was a bit more like long term and something that i could actually build a career in and the uvaro program kind of brought me in into that in an amazing way um it was sort of like i I understood what technology was what software was but i had no idea how it was actually sold how it was used in a business context so you've had a chance to see a lot i mean in kind of metropolitan areas and remote areas, in hospitality and energy and safety, tech sales uh, is similar in some ways, but different in others. You know, what, what was your biggest surprise? What jumped out to you the most as you, you went through the program and then embarked on the rest of your career? So I think what surprised me the most about tech sales and just B2B in general is how much more kind of thoughtful in understanding it is, how much more focus you have to have on actually understanding the businesses that you're targeting, knowing them back to front, and then developing something that works together with that. In B2C sales, it's very like, we have this product, these are the reasons you should buy it, and do any of these resonate with you? And it's just sort of like, quick like that, you don't have to know anyone. Um, be, to make that sale. Whereas in B2B, you have to understand, you have to have like not just a surface level understanding, but a deep understanding of where you fit into that person's business. And that probably surprised me the most. So that's an interesting, interesting nuance there. So when you first started answering, I started hearing that as um, you need to do more research in kind of B2B and tech sales. Uh, but as you, you rounded that out, you know, I took away more of that it's around developing a deeper understanding maybe of the industry and the role and being more of an expert. Uh, is did, Am I interpreting that comment right? Yeah, I, I think it's kind of both because you, you need to develop that level of expertise and then you need to research their company to see where that expertise fits. Nice. Now, during the program, uh, part of the process is uh, that kind of job search, getting back out into the market, so you spent this time, you know, honing your craft. Uh, what was the the job search like for you? You know, what what did that feel like, and how did it go? Yeah, the job job search is tough. Job search was harder harder than anything I've ever sold, to be honest. It's it's more draining um, to sell yourself and put because you put so much research into these companies that you're applying to and you're interviewing with, and you don't even know if you're going to get any feedback or if it's going to move forward. And it's also hard to tell in the first place if it's somewhere that you really, really want to be. Um, and mm-hmm. then getting getting those no's. Uh, like before I got the opportunity with Fritz, I was passed over for um, just like a very entry-level BDR position. And that was that was a really, really tough moment to go through. It was just mm-hmm. kind of a, a hit to almost like my sense of self. Um, so that that application process, I think, was by far the hardest part of anything that I've done in sales. Now, you've had several other roles. Uh, did you go through an application interview process for those other ones as well? Uh, for OmniShield, OmniShield was a um, previous manager of mine that brought me on. I was the first person hired in the, in the Winnipeg office, and he just kind of called mm-hmm. me up and said, like, this is what I'm starting. Um, <laughs> yeah, do you want to get in on it? That's fantastic. That's a great opportunity. Uh, I can see how comparing that to kind of the more the more rigorous interview and, and kind of selling yourself process would be a big change. Uh, that that sounds stressful. Yeah, no, it was it was definitely something that I that I wasn't used to before. 
and having like these these lar larger companies with a lot more process than I'm used to. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you spoke a little bit about that rejection, but then you've got this really amazing opportunity that, that came to you with Brits. Maybe you could share a little bit about how that came to be. Yeah, so that was a, a bit of a kind of strange sequence of events. So it started with like applying for applying for jobs in sort of the the environment that's going on right now with so many businesses either shutting down, slowing down, laying off salespeople. It kind of made me it made me sit and think about like where do I really want to end up? Like what type of industry mm -hmm. as well as like what industries would still be doing well in this situation. Um, and that kind of led me to solar because it's something that I remember being interested in when I was like 12, 13 years old. Um, <laughs> and so I got initially like had the interview and got hired on as a B2C salesperson because I had that direct sales experience. Um, but what I did was that they had built this amazing kind of back end for referral partnerships and they weren't really doing any outreach for it. So this is something that I, that I learned and we had done many times at Uvara was I built a... Um, kind of ICP value proposition and cadence for outreach to the best partner companies for them. And I sent that off to the guy who hired me and he CC'd the CEO on it. Um, and then that led to my position being that I don't do the B2C side. I'm doing B2B, B2B outreach and I've been successful enough at that that they're actually going to start building a team around me over the next little while. That's fantastic. Uh, I mean, incredible application of skills, but also just a fantastic opportunity. That's awesome. Congrats. Yeah, and no, it was amazing. And it, it felt weird because it's like we did it so many times at Uvaro that it probably took me 10 minutes to, to develop that. <laughs> it, it's kind of funny when you take a skill set or a bit of knowledge from kind of one area and apply it in somewhere new, just how disruptive that can be. Um, so that's, a, that's a great example. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people haven't seen ideas kind of written out in that way. Um, and it, it's so easy to read for someone and it's so easy to understand compared to when you just sort of talk to them about it. They don't retain it. Mm -hmm. um, but having it written out that way is very powerful. So this is an incredible success. You've had a heck of a journey, uh, you know, all, all over both industry-wise and geographically. Reflecting on that journey, you know, what, what success are you most proud of so far? You know, what's one of the highlights for you? I think... Like, like what I was saying, when I got hired with OmniShield, it was just the, the person who started the Winnipeg office, he, he called me and he basically put together, he showed me what the demo was, booked me a few demos, mm -hmm. and then he left to Toronto for two weeks. Um, oh. So yeah, so I, so I watched the video <laughs> demo and I, and I did that and I sold my very first one. Um, and then I kind of kept going and it was just me and him, we built that to um, three offices and over 50 salespeople within a year. Um, and then that's kind of what's given me the confidence to move forward is like, if I'm in a position where I can just like, figure that out, you just fail until you get it right. So it's funny, at, at the beginning, I would start off and say, Oh, that was that was terrible onboarding, but clearly it worked. <laughs> so you know, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. So that's incredible. I love it. Um, that's a hard bar to beat. Uh, but you know, journeys aren't aren't short. Uh, you still have a long way to go. I'm sure you have many future ambitions. So if you're thinking about chatting with future Ian, uh, what else uh, are you hoping to accomplish? What's something you want to congratulate your future self for having done? Yeah, so they, I have this, this image of success for me. Um, and it is, it's very specific. It is a loft apartment in Montreal or somewhere maybe the GTA, but it has to have a pool table in the living room. And that's, that's, that's what I'm wor working towards. Um, yeah, so like I love it. running the team, but that's, that's where I want to be, that, that image. I love that. That's so identifiable. And if you can visualize it, it makes it so much more attainable. Yeah, that's great. It's, like, it's not like the craziest thing in the world, but that's, that's what I see as success. Nice, nice. Uh, I know I said that I wouldn't keep you too long and that you had a few other calls. Do you have time for a few rapid fire questions before we wrap up? Yeah, no worries. Perfect. Okay, so first off, what is your favorite sales tool? Um, favorite sales tools? I've been getting uh, getting set up with Kite actually has been amazing. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. That's always good. I, I For our audience, I swear I didn't pay him to say that, but thank you, Ian. That's always great. Yeah, he didn't pay me enough. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, quick next question. No. <laughs> what What about your movie? What's your favorite movie? Oh, that's such a hard one. Uh, my favorite movie when I was a kid was Donnie Darko. Recently was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Can give you twenty more answers. Oh, but... those are both good choices. Donnie Darko is a good one. I haven't seen that in too long. Man, I, I love these questions because I'm I'm adding movies back onto my to watch list. So this is good. Awesome. Ah, uh, okay. Last one before we let you go. When you were a kid, what did you want to grow up to be? I wanted to be the person that designs Lego sets, specifically. That was my my childhood oh, dream. That is oh, that is a badass goal. I <laughs> like that. Yeah. Oh man, we've had we've had astronauts, teachers, all of that. But I that's a good one. That's a yeah. That's a new high point for my, me. My, my family, my extended family is from Denmark, which is where all Lego is made. So we actually, we went, we went there and we went to the real Legoland in, in Denmark. Um, so I always wow. felt like a personal connection. It, is it everything that I imagine it to be? Like that, that sounds incredible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Also the new sets new came bl- out there first. Okay. So you know what? I've got my new answer to that question. I hope to congratulate future Joseph for going to Legoland in, in Denmark now. Yeah. Ian, thank you so much for the time. This has been an incredible conversation. Uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you for thank you for having me on. I know that I said we'd let you go. Uh, I think we've used up all the time I said I could. Uh, but looking forward to our next conversation, and I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic evening. Yeah, you as well. Thank you again. Chat soon.